Uh, and another story we've not had a chance to talk about in the last hour. This uh, is a, a striking tale. Scientists have uncovered evidence of a large-scale prehistoric migration to Britain that might be linked to the spread of Celtic languages. The mass movement of people started in continental Europe between 1400 BC and 870 BC. The discovery helps to explain the genetic makeup of many people in Britain today. It's a big topic, but let's try to find out more in the space of a few minutes with Gillian Hovell, who is an archaeologist and has been looking through uh, all of this. My goodness, that that this is striking, possibly something people really don't know anything about. Uh, in a nutshell, explain what we're learning about, what went on, how many people did it involve? Yes, hello, good evening. Yes, it's a very striking tale indeed, in that we knew that people came for the Neolithic to create farming for us like 6,000 years ago. We knew there was another surge of beaker people who came in. It's not a new thing. And then they discovered through DNA, which really is the future of our past, we can really read into places where we have no writing so we have to look at the archaeology and we find that there's this third migration in the Bronze Age time where people have come from France, it seems, into Kent, first of all, and then spread across England and Wales, especially. And they seem to have brought what might be our Celtic roots with us. Uh, we are a wondrously mixed up uh, country of all sorts of DNA. This age when they're looking at the DNA is when your viewers might remember must farm in Cambridgeshire being found, the house that fell into a lake and was preserved and there's wooden wheels and the like. This is the era that we're talking about 3000 years ago. So we can look at the DNA and they looked at 800 individuals to actually see their DNA. And they found that across Britain and Western and Central Europe, there was this migration into Britain and they may have, we can't tell from DNA what language they spoke, but they may have brought a form of Celtic language with them. They, it looks like there was already a form of Celtic language right in the north and in Ireland. So that's prompting, you know, we get answers and we find more questions to ask. Look at Ireland a bit more closely, look at France a bit more closely, perhaps. So it's really another piece in that jigsaw. We have this huge jigsaw puzzle of our prehistoric past. And this d piece of DNA gives us another part of that clue. And, and uh, I mean, it is extraordinary what can be learnt now from DNA, because I was looking through all the stats and all these, all this research and information. And one of the things that comes out is that uh, people were lactose intolerant. <laughs> I mean, that is astonishing <laughs> that you can find that out. <laughs> uh, it, it is absolutely astonishing. I mean, I've dug up bones myself and you, know, you would never guess looking at them what you can tell from the remains and yes a few hundred years after this migration in the iron age we discover that there's suddenly this vast uptake of lactose tolerance nobody could drink raw milk before and we're hundreds and hundreds of years before they did it in europe and it's not a physical achievement it's usually a slow evolutionary thing and yet this spread incredibly quickly now, you have to ask yourself, why? Why suddenly does the population have this massive ability to drink milk when it didn't have it before? It kind of hints that maybe there's a problem with the water and drinking milk is your clean liquid that you can drink. And if you couldn't drink that, then you were scuppered, really. So it may be that we're looking at some kind of disaster or that perhaps disease. We don't know. It has prompted this amazing concept that people changed what they could drink and you know people who are lactose intolerance now will know all too well you know, what it does to you <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well there's it, it, it really see their lives it's brilliant yes mm. remarkable and there's a striking image on which end isn't it thank you very much indeed Gillian thank you very uh, much. happy Christmas to you thank you very thank much you. Gillian Hovell who is an archaeologist uh goodness a lot of questions there in that as well but uh, very very interesting